Hello and welcome back to this episode of Smash Engineering. Today we're going to be showing you how I added a heater to this pool setup and I've already done it. I waited till after I did it and after it's ran for a good while now um, to make sure that this wasn't only a good in theory that it also worked and is something that will work for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, it, it turned out great. I'm really happy with it and also the other reason I made this video is I didn't, couldn't find any other videos out there on how people actually did this. So I hope that this is detailed and as instructional as you need. Again, like I say in every video, <clears throat> do all this stuff at your own risk. Cutting pipe, everything involves a certain amount of risk. This is just instructional or informational. Um, so what you do is, is on you and be safe. And, uh, and uh, hopefully this works out and, and we'll show you what you can do to heat your pool and add months to maybe a month on the beginning and a month on the end of its serviceable life for the year. So let's go ahead and get started. Smash engineering. All right, so the first thing you want to do is dry fit all your fittings. Set your equipment up how you want it. Measure out all your uh, ends and uh, get your pieces cut. And I do this, obviously, dry fitting means without glue. During this time, you can work on your layout and where you want things to be. Um, you can make adjustments, changes, without having to actually destroy any fittings that you've glued together. I kind of cheat here and use a circular saw um, to make my cuts on the PVC. Probably not the best way to do it, but it's a quick and efficient way, and uh, so that's what I did. I used rubber couplers um, that are meant to go between, I believe, PVC and cast iron. Um, to go between my salt chlorinator, uh, chlorinator um, device and the PVC pipes. As always with uh, doing this kind of stuff, measure twice, cut once, put it that way. PVC has went up a lot since COVID. And when you're dry fitting, you can take this time to make it look neat and organized and like you knew what you were doing. Um, it always makes it look really nice when you got all good angles and, and they run near each other. Like these two pipes, I'm going to run near each other um, going from the uh, pump area um, to the pool area. Keep in mind when uh, putting the rubber uh, flex pieces to the hard PVC pieces, um, you can't do straight from rubber to the threaded area because the threaded area will allow water to come up through the spiral of the threads. Um, I hadn't yet learned that in this part of the video, but I did uh, right when I went to add uh, water to the system, it started gurgling out of this fitting. So I changed it up a little bit and modified a uh, <clears throat> universal end piece to go um, on there and I show how I cut it with the circular saw to reduce the uh, restriction on it and so um, you'll see that later on
All right, as you can see here, I have it all um, completely dry fitted. It's all installed how I believe I want it to be. Now I do make some minor adjustments when I go to glue it just because I wanted things to be a little tighter or at a certain angle or just a little different. But this gives you a chance to look at your layout, see if you're happy with it, see if it's clean enough for you. Um, just really tidy it up in this moment. Um, don't be afraid to make changes, whatever that uh, fit your style and what you want it to look like when you're done. Here I am making one of the fittings I was talking about earlier. Um, these are like a universal like hose adapter. Um, but if you cut off the hose part, I found the piece that's remaining that I'm holding in my hand here. Um, see the restriction here is crazy compared to when you cut the piece off. So, but the piece that I'm keeping goes right into this rubber fitting here and you can clamp down on it and it just turns into a really nice kind of like adapter piece for it. But now we are gonna start actually gluing everything in place. So now's the time to be real careful, take your time. Uh, you don't wanna mess up here, it will get costly. I personally like to use a Sharpie or something and mark the like lines on it to where the angles are going to be. That way I can glue it all with it unattached and uh, I know exactly which direction everything's supposed to face. A good trick to doing this is just put a number or a letter next to it and uh, you'll be able to know really quickly uh, which joint goes to which piece. you're using the primer it, this was a brand new primer thing so it always came out with too much as you can see there it ran inside there it's not going to hurt anything it just looks sloppy if it gets all over the outside so we want to make things look as nice as possible of course because we have pride in what we do uh, so just uh, try to see how i hold it at an angle uh, when i'm doing it to keep the runs from running back onto the piece it will stain the pipe and it looks kind of sloppy but um, with your marker marks, uh, with your Sharpie marks that you're using to align everything, 
Uh, you can wipe those off with like nail polish remover uh, after you're done if they bother you. I just tend to mark on a spot where you won't see it when it's done. Okay, so this is the adapter I was talking about. The, the nut piece goes here, but this is restrictive. It's for different size hoses. I'm using this top one, so I'm gonna cut it off right here, and that way it doesn't choke it down.
All right, when you're uh, approaching the end, you want to make sure you go back through and tighten all your rubber connections. Um, make sure that uh, they're all tight. Otherwise, when you do flood it with water, when the water pressure does build up, it'll blow these joints apart. Uh, so it's a good idea to go through and just double check everything, look at everything, make sure you glued every part. It's real easy to miss one. I like to start from one end, go to the other. That way I glue as I go, so I'm not jumping around. It's an easy way not to you know, forget to glue up a joint. Not a big deal if you do, you just have to really dry it off and then primer it and re-glue it. All right, so everything's glued. I'm gonna let it dry for like 10 minutes before I flood water into it. Probably a little excessive, but I'm not a plumber by trade. So if you're a plumber and you're watching me do this and you're thinking, wow, this guy is, doesn't know what he's doing. You're probably right probably right but I know enough to get me in trouble and that's what I've done here so this is our exit I went with these rubber um, adapters because I could find no better way to adapt PVC to the existing pool shutoffs so if you have a better way I imagine this video should get quite a few views because when I was looking at how to install this heater there was not one good video that I found. There might be one out there, but I couldn't find it and I spent a lot of time trying to. So, this is how, this is my solution to the problem. I used an inch and a half pipe. I used um, quarter, an inch and a quarter to inch and a half couplers. The pieces that come with the pool um, that thread onto, well, let's just say this. This, for example. Um, these are inch and a quarter on mine. So my original idea was I was gonna cut this off and clamp to this, <clears throat> but the internal side holds an O-ring up against these. So what I did was I cut off, I had some adapter pieces so I don't ruin this expensive hose. Um, I had some adapter pieces. I think we got some video of me doing stupid things with a, with a circular saw and cutting off the restrictive part. I don't know if we did or not, but if we did, I'll put it in there. I'll put it actually right in this moment because this is a good way to lose a finger. So don't do what I do. This is just an instructional video. All liability is on you. You are responsible for yourself. But moving on. <clears throat> so um, when you're gluing this, you can do one of two things. You can glue in a, in a way that you keep everything lined up or um, what an old timer taught me was to put a line with an arrow at the end of the line. <clears throat> And you know and put a number because when you're doing multiple joints um, you might flip the 90 degree fitting around and now your marks are off and your end results gonna be off so <coughs> if you don't like how the lines and stuff look afterwards you can take some nail polish remover wipe it down it'll wipe it'll wipe all your marker off or most of it so um, another good tip is to um, like I like to face the red stuff in this pipe. Um, I accidentally did not but you know, it's cool Let's everyone know what you got going on here when they, when they come because most people who have a pool like this This will probably turn into a conversation piece because not many people have the pool set up like this so This is our um, Exit this will where the water will come into the pool. So backtracking this is this is where it draws the water from the pool And it goes down into there I'm really hoping that doesn't leak because there was no real good way to hook this piece to PVC. I couldn't do it like you see it there, so I had to do it like this. So it should work just fine. I tilted it out for a reason so you can easily come here and grab this. If this was completely vertical or 90 degrees, um, it would be touching this. And I don't want anything, as the pool sloshes around, I don't want anything rubbing on the pool. So I left a nice gap, I left a nice gap there. Um, <clears throat> but when you turn this, this will be what shuts on. So if you end up with a leak, you can shut it down. And that's what that's there for. Same thing with that. If you need to work on the reverse side, this is also a shutoff. I don't really like shutoffs. They are restrictive to the flow, but they're kind of necessary because if a pipe blows out and you don't have someone around, this entire pool will drain out. So, Moving this way. Um, originally, I had intended on digging a trench here um, and putting the pipe under underground. But then we thought that in the winter time here, we have to drain these pipes. Um, and the only way to drain them will be to, well, you can drain them other ways, but the best way to drain them is gonna be to take them and put them in the rafters of the garage until the next year when we get it out and hook it back up. So 
<clears throat> um, so as you see, I ran it together. I try to keep it nice and neat. Um, these will eventually have, I'm gonna build a, a wood, and I'll probably make a video for that in case you wanted to know, but I'll probably build like a wood protective thing so people don't step on these. Um, they should hold child weight. I, I don't think they would break, but you don't want the tension that it's gonna put up on the other things to transfer into those. So coming back here, I did the same thing here. Um, I was able to fit, it's a, I think this is a two, two, two uh, inch and a quarter. So it slid over top of the pipe here. So it's very, very unrestrictive. And then um, it went to another one of those um, pieces there, which I think I already cut that one. Um, so then this is your filter, your pump, everything. This is the heater. <coughs> um, I tried to run the plumbing, the piping. This might look kind of goofy to you, um, but I wanted everything to be accessible from one location. That way, when you come over here, you kneel down, you can access this, and you can access this. It's really the only thing you need to access other than the filter direction, which you only do that when you're flushing out the filter, the pump anyway. So we're about ready to run this. Oh, the other thing, if you see coming out of the hot side, in between your chlorine generator, if you do use one, and your hot side, they recommend putting a check valve in there, and that's what that is, to keep um, any of the chlorine, fresh chlorinated water from backtracking. Like say when the pump shuts off, the water can kind of equalize. This chlorinated, freshly chlorinated water can backflow into your pump. I don't really like check valves because again, they're a restriction and all of any restrictions lowers the life of your pump unless it's designed for more than the pressure that you're causing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, flood the pipes and uh, check for leaks. And after we don't see leaks, um, we will power up the pump and power up the heater and hopefully have some warm water to swim in. All right, we've opened up the valves. We had a small leak. I don't know if I caught that on the last clip or not. We had a small leak down here. Um, I just had forgot. <clears throat> These have a, a rubber O-ring in them that you have to put back in them. And when I mocked it all up, I didn't have the O-ring in there. So I put the O-ring in there, no longer leaking. <clears throat> there is a lot more pressure in this situation than you would think, um, than I thought. Um, you can calculate the pressure, which I didn't want to really do, but um, every foot of water, gravity, all that. Make sure all your shutoff valves are turned on when you go to fire it up. That would cause you undue stress. Um, but yeah, so it starts here at the B, goes down to my shutoff valve, goes down, <clears throat> into here no leaks there's water here because i purged the system here you loosen this let all the air out let it flood and uh, be careful because when i did that that's when i realized how much pressure there actually was here i was barely able to get that lid back on your pump um coming around here i need to zip tie this or mount this up because i want that to stay up there into your inlet here um, which there's a special adapter piece i will Put a picture of it right now because this is the one you'll want the other one sucks don't get it um out hot water out here to your check valve which is here this re prevents flow i think i said this already but it prevents flow from the chlorinator back into your um, heater which will then um, corrode your piping inside because it's really toxic water for metals <clears throat> goes through your chlorinator comes out into this other pipe here which then flows on the outside of that one, <clears throat> leading you up to the outlet into the pool. Surprisingly though, it's actually coming out quite a bit warm already and it's only been on for like five minutes. So there's a noticeable difference. It works, it's not leaking. I hope it helps you, I really do. I, I made this video um, so that it could help somebody because I was lost when I first looked at this. I didn't know what exactly I was gonna do, how exactly I was gonna run it. Originally, as you can see in my other videos, the pump pool setup is all right here. And you're running electrical cords and you're trying to figure out how you're gonna keep kids from tripping on it as they, you know, horse around the pool and stuff. So this is my answer to that. Um, just keep in mind that you need it as free flowing as possible. This has plenty of flow coming out, so I'm not worried about that here. No. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Uh, throw me a subscribe, throw me a like on there. Um, leave us some comments. Uh, really appreciate all you guys. Um, the channel is growing and I'm happy and I hope you're happy and just remember that you matter and the people around you matter. So if you see someone having a rough day, 
either stay out of their way or try to find a way to make it better. So love you guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.